On behalf of the New York Wine and Grape Foundation, we welcome you to the Classic Wine Awards Ceremony, announcing the winners of the 37th New York Wine Classic Competition. Tonight's event will reveal and celebrate the best in category winners, as well as the prestigious Governor's Cup, Best Wine, and Winery of the Year, Best Overall Showing by Winery Winners. You will also learn more about New York Wine and Grape Foundation's ongoing partnership with the Beverage Testing Institute, who judged over 749 wines, entered into the competition from 108 wineries across the state. While we wait for everyone to get logged in, we would like to review a few logistical details. If you find yourself with streaming issues, please limit other internet users in your office or household. You may need to close out all other open uh, browsers, or you may also find it helpful to log out and log back in with Firefox or Chrome. We do have two forms of communication for tonight's webinar, the chat and Q&A section. The chat section is an informal way for you to communicate with other attendees. Please be sure to select all panelists and attendees in the drop-down field, as it can default to panelists only. Today's webinar is being recorded and streamed to Facebook Live. To begin today's webinar, I would like to introduce Sam Filler, Executive Director of the New York Wine and Grape Foundation. Sam, I'll hand the mic to you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 New York Wine Classic Award Ceremony. I'm Sam Filler, Executive Director of New York Wine and Grape Foundation, and I am excited to present a special guest tonight, Commissioner Richard Ball of the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets. Commissioner Ball has been uh, commissioner since January of 2014, and I've uh, enjoyed a long working relationship with him, and I'm excited to turn it over to him. Over to you, Commissioner. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Very happy to join you on this special evening to celebrate the New York wine industry at the annual New York Wine Classic. I've been honored to be a part of this event for many years and to help spotlight our incredible grape growers and winemakers who continue to set themselves apart and put New York on the map as a premier winemaking state. I just want to take a moment and thank Sam and the foundation for all their work in promoting New York grape growers and winemakers. We have been proud to partner with the Wine and Grape Foundation over the years to showcase our award-winning wines and also help tell the story of our world-class wineries. New York's producers are extremely dedicated and innovative and their passion for their craft is reflected in the excellence and the diversity of the wines we produce. With New York proudly being the third largest producer of wine in the United States, the industry is significant to the state's economy and the agricultural industry with our farm-based wineries supporting our grape growers and the purchase of local ingredients. And beyond that, the industry here in New York, in the Finger Lakes, the Hudson Valley, Long Island, and beyond is vital to the tourism industry as well, helping to spur travelers to visit our wineries and communities all across our state. I want to extend my sincerest congratulations to the winners of the New York Wine Classic today, and I want to raise a glass to all of our wineries on doing what they love and doing it better than anyone else in the country. Cheers. Thank you, Commissioner Ball, for those remarks. And um, this is our 37th year uh, hosting the Wine Classic. And many of you who have been involved in the industry for a long time, you probably recall that we'd have a big event in the Finger Lakes at the Harbor Hotel, and we'd bring in judges from all over the country. Uh, we'd have basically a one-day marathon of wine tasting, announce the winners, and um, We'd work with the governor's office to promote those winners, and uh, it was it was really exciting to get together in person. And then, of course, uh, COVID happened in 2020, and we had to look for a new way to continue hosting these awards and having the wines evaluated without getting together in person. And we were fortunate to learn from the Garden State Grape Growers Association that they had been working with the Beverage Testing Institute, and they put me in touch with Gerald O'Connard, who is the, um, the president of Beverage Testing Institute, and what we liked about working with them is their methodology was de developed at Cornell University 
and they have a team of testers that really understand the typicity of New York State wines and how they're distinct from other regions of the world. And it's been a really great partnership for the past three years, and we're really excited to continue this work with them. So I'm pleased to uh, turn it over to Gerald, who will talk a little bit more about BTI. Thank you very much, Sam and everyone. It's a pleasure to be here in honor, really. And yes, this was a great year for New York wines. Um, our uh, panelists, have, we assembled some of our top wine uh, judges for this project. We tasted it. Unlike the one day Sam mentioned, we tasted the wines, uh, 400, sorry, 749 of them to be precise, over a little over two months, uh, and tasting them in much smaller quantities. And the reason for that is uh, palate fatigue. So part of our methodology that we did develop at Cornell uh, many years ago in the early 80s was um, to avoid palate fatigue. So we limited it to 30 wines per day. And as you mentioned, Sam, uh, we have a lot of experience being a New York corporation having started in Ithaca, New York uh, in 1981. Uh, we have great experience with New York wines and the very particular typicities of the Appalachians within New York. And that uh, institutional knowledge carries through to this day. And uh, it, it's just been from my tenure here at, at over 25 years at Beverage Testing Institute, I'd have to say this is really one of the best um, crops of wines that we have seen uh, from the state of New York. There were some amazing examples that really compare to world-class examples of those categories. Uh, and again, we run the oldest international wine competition in the United States. So we see wines from all over the world. Our benchmark standards are those global standards and New York met those standards this year in many, many cases. So it was a real uh, pleasure uh, personally for myself to sit on the panels and moderate a few, uh, as well as my team and our, our uh, cadre of over a dozen judges who did the, the uh, hard but rewarding work of judging these wines this year. So thank you very much for the opportunity and the honor. Thanks, Gerald. Pleasure to have you here. Um, and I think our our next speaker or host requires no introduction, uh, Karen McNeil. This is our second year working with her uh, as the host of this event. And um, you're probably familiar with her Wine Bible, which is now on to its third edition, which was released last October. It sold over a million copies. Um, and I was reviewing her Wikipedia page before uh, this event, and she got her start at age 19. She published her first article about artisanal butters. And I guess once she turned 21, she decided it was time to graduate to wine and uh, stuck with that because there's probably much more interesting uh, palate experiences you can have with wine. But uh, it's an honor to have her here. And Karen, I turn it over to you. Thank you. Sam, I'm so excited to be here. I want you to know that that article was specifically on Hudson Valley butter. So um, New York State was uh, very much a part of my writing early on. I'm. Um, as I said, excited and honored to be here. I spent much of my adult life, my early adult life in New York and realized um, that quickly that even though so many of us think of New York in terms of skyscrapers and Manhattan, that in fact, New York State is just spectacularly rural with beautiful glistening sapphire, deep glacial lakes and mountains and farmlands and of course vineyards. Um, you know, for the last several years, I think New York state wine has flown under the radar a little bit, um, but you're very much in the full steam ahead with a, a renaissance of quality in the state. And um, I'm excited for tonight's winners because they are living examples and their wines are examples of the renaissance that is underway. So, with no further ado, we should get started. We are going to now take a look at the best in class awards. And here we go. Uh, a word about the best specialty wine for a moment. New York State makes more wines from grapes than from any other commodity. However, if you've been to New York State, you know it also makes fantastic wines from fruits and honey. And so we this year also had a best specialty wine category and the winner was Middleborough Winery Blackberry Wine 2002. 
The best Cabernet Sauvignon went to Osprey's Dominion 2019 Cabernet. The best overall Chardonnay went to Wolfer Estate 2020, excuse me, Chardonnay. And the best oaked Chardonnay, also Wolfer Estate 2020. Uh, the best unoaked Chardonnay, Borghese Vineyard 2020. The best Cabernet Franc, and Yellows Vineyard 2015 Cabernet Franc. And the best port like fortified Weiss Vineyards 183. The best Gewurztraminer Boundary Breaks Gewurztraminer 2022. Best Gruner Weltliner, Dr. Konstantin Frank 2021 Gruner. Best Ice Wine Boundary Breaks again, Riesling Ice Wine 2020. Best Late Harvest Pomenock Late Harvest Sauvignon Blanc 2019. Best Blaufrankisch Cuca Spring 2021 Blaufrankisch. Best Malbec Wolfer Estate Vineyards. And our last list, uh, Best Merlot, Coffee Pot Cellars, 2015, the library selection. Best Petillon Naturel, Toast Wineries, 2022, made from white muscat. Best Pinot Gris, Sanino Vineyard, 2022. Best Pinot Noir, Wolfer Estate again, the Landius Bottling, 2019. Best Dry Riesling, Anthony Road Wine Company, the Art Series. Best Riesling Medium Dry, Sheldrake Point Winery, the 2021, and Best Riesling Medium Sweet, Dr. Constantine Frank, Reserve 2021. Best Riesling Sweet, Weiss Vineyards, the Vinzer Select. Best Overall Riesling, Anthony Road Wine Company, the Art Series, 2017. Best Rosé, Wolfer Estate, 2022. Best Sauvignon Blanc. One Woman, the 2019 Sauvignon. Best Syrah, Chateau Lafayette, Renault, 2018. And Best Traditional Method Sparkling, Sparkling Point, 2018, Blanc de Blanc. Best Traumanet, look at all of this diversity. It's quite amazing, the number of different types of wine New York makes. Best Traumanet, the Kuki Fine Wines Serenity, 2016. Best Vinifera Red Blend, Osprey's Dominion, Meritage, Flight 2015. Best Vinifera and Non-Vinifera Blend, Knapp Winery, Pasta Red. Best Other Vinifera Red Varietal, Dr. Constantine Frank, Saparavi. Best Vinifera White Blend, Hazlitt, 1852 Vineyard Schooner White. And Best Other Vinifera White Varietal, Sheldrake, Sheldrake Point, excuse me, Blanc de Noir Gamay. All right, there we are. Oof, what a list, that diversity really just continues to uh, astound me. Well, in addition to all the best in class awards, there are five very important special category awards. And the winners of these awards are waiting in the wings right as we're talking now. So I can't wait to bring them on one by one. So our first category is Best Sparkling Wine, and the winner is Jason's Vineyard 2021 Bubbly Rosé. And accepting on behalf of Jason's Vineyard is, excuse me, Eric Bilka, who is the winemaker there with owner Althea Damianos. Uh, Althea and Eric, congratulations. Um, Eric, give me uh, your... Uh, a quick word on what single trait you think a great sparkling wine must possess. Well, I, I think it's always comes down to the mousse. Um, delicate bubbles is always important. So uh, bubbles and pink, you can't go wrong. <laughs> bubbles and pink, you can't go wrong. I'll, I'll completely agree with that. Well, thank you again and congratulations. And please congratulate your whole team for us. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And now let's go to the category best white wine. The best white wine this year for our New York State Classic Wine Awards goes to Boundary Breaks Gewurztraminer 2022. Accepting is owner Bruce Murray. Bruce, congratulations. Uh, thanks, Karen. It's, it's nice to be here tonight. First time, actually. Well, you really deserve it. Um, 
You know, I know you specialize in very cool climate grapes, Riesling, Gewurztraminer, which was, which was your winning wine tonight, uh, as well as Cabernet Franc. Um, for Gewurztraminer in particular, um, I'm wondering if you think New York State really holds the, the mantle of being the greatest place in the Americas for that variety, for Gewurztraminer. Well, I think we're maybe one of the few left uh, making it in the United States. I, the first Gewurztraminer I had was in California, and it really just jumped out at me for being so distinctly different than any other wine. You know, I, like um, like Riesling, it's it's its neighbor. We can make this in many styles, and this particular one was um, was grown in a very hot, dry climate. The fruit got very, very ripe. So this is a, more, a much more luscious, rich, dense Gewurztraminer. It's um, it 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 kind of harkens back to the first Gewurztraminer I had from Alsace, which was just was just unmistakably unlike anything else. And we're really proud of this grape. We agree. We were tasting it earlier tonight and it's absolutely delicious and love, absolutely love all that beautiful, pure, almost rose water like aroma that it has. Well, congratulations, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to go to the best pink category uh, and the best pink wine, drum roll here, is... Wolfer Estate, Rosé, 2022, accepting is Roman Raw, uh, coming to us all the way, I understand, from Vienna, winemaker Roman Roth, as well as Max Rohn, who is a family member and owner of Wolfer Estate. So, wow, best pink, Roman. I know you have a lot of experience making wine in Europe um, and other places as well, internationally. So given your background in particular in making European wine, what makes a, a great rosé in your mind? Well, first of all, you, we are very excited to win best rosé wine. Uh, well, to take rosé serious, I think, is its first, you know, that you don't treat it like an evil stepchild. So we <laughs> take it very serious and we take, we use, make a blend of, in this case, eight different grape varieties and each one does its little part and balances the keys to, su to success and we're just very thrilled for the whole team it's our 32nd vintage of rosé this uh, 2022 so we've been at rosé for a long time to make a dry rosé and i think we've helped to do a little rosé revolution out there and get lots of young people to drink wine and although i'm getting older our customers getting younger or both maybe so we're very excited that you know, when the quality is recognized. Well, watch out Provence, right? Um, uh, cool climate, New York State can certainly make great rosé. Congratulations, Roman, to both Thank you and Max. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you. The whole, the whole team. Excellent. All right. Now it's time for the red category. And the winner for the best red are we ready? Is Huca Spring 2021 Blaufrankisch. I adore Blaufrankisch. It is such a great variety. And accepting is Dan Bissell, uh, who is the winemaker. I hope we're reaching in. There, there he is, I think. Dan, do we have you? There you are. Congratulations. You yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, I was just saying how much I love Blau Frankish. It's well known as a Central European variety and, and lives quite at home in New York State. Um, how do you describe Blau Frankish to someone who might not have had yours yet? How do you describe the flavors? I, it's, it's, it's certainly a variety that we're, um, you know, really focusing on uh, Cuba Spring and have been for a long time, um, you know, including my predecessors. It's this piece, which makes it, you know, really exciting to be able to intervene and, and really showcase a cooler climate style um, Lemberger Blau Frankish. So we're excited about this. Yes, and it goes by both names in the United States, both Blau Frankish and Lemberger, and you have both names on the label. 
I think Blau Frankish is not that hard to say though. So I, I always call it Blau Frankish as they do in, in Austria where it is so famous as well. Um, this is a, if you've not had Blau Frankish yet, it's a chillable red that is absolutely sensational, I think, especially, especially in the summer, although of course could be drunk all year round. So Dan, congratulations to you and your team at Cuca Spring. Um, we're really happy for you. Thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate it. Great. All right. And well. yeah. <laughs> I think we got a little bit more of Dan there at the end. Um, now it's time for our fifth category award winner, which is best dessert wine. I can't wait for this. Um, award because New York State makes so many delicious sweet wines um, that can be dessert or can be just enjoyed um, on their own. The category best dessert wine this year in the classic goes to Pomenoc 2019 Late Harvest Sauvignon Blanc. Accepting for Pomenoc is winemaker Karim Massoud. Kareem, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness, this is quite the wine. We have been enjoying this here. I wanna hold up this very sexy, lean, fabulous bottle. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> we both have it. Um, this is such a delicious wine. And, you know, I think one of the misperceptions about um, sweet wines is that they're all about sweetness, but what they have to also be about is freshness and acidity so that the wine tastes very harmonious and not cloying. I was really struck tasting your wine, how beautiful and precise it is. Um, what made you wanna make late harvest Sauvignon Blanc? <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Because it I... couldn't have been easy. It couldn't have been easy. My father is right here. <laughs> so... That's the short answer because he, he did it first. Um, but uh, you know, my, both of my parents with me right here, and, um, uh, they both um, start, started making late harvest wines back in the early nineties uh, out of necessity because the vineyard and a couple of vintage was full of botrytis. And so uh, cre using creativity and, and necessity, they decided we, you know, to turn what could have been a problem into a, a great opportunity. And we started making late harvest wines back in 92 and 93. Mm. Well, this wine is just really uh, spectacular. Since your parents are there, can you ask them for me too? How did they love to enjoy this wine? Do they enjoy it as, as, uh, as dessert, with dessert, or just on any old Saturday afternoon? <laughs> Not just any well, old uh, wine, wine is actually for us, it's food and it is best enjoyed with something to go with it. And my favorite uh, go to uh, companion is the Stilton cheese. Blue if you, cheese. Blue cheese, you know, Roquefort or Stilton. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's interesting about that idea is the cheese is made by a fungus and so is the wine. But one is very sweet, the other is very sharp. And on the palate, you get this explosion of wonderful flavors when you take them together. All right. Well, that's the wine tip for today. Um, a salty blue cheese like Roquefort or Stilton, along with this beautiful Late Harvest Sauvignon Blanc from Pomona. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations, Masood family. Um, the wine is spectacular. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and now uh, I have the great pleasure of announcing the Governor's Cup Award. Um, New York's famous governor, uh, Kathy Hochul, cannot be with us. Um, so uh, I, I hope though that she is enjoying this wine that I'm about to announce. The Governor's Cup, uh, excuse me, the Governor's Cup is awarded to the best wine, it has to be made from grapes, but the best wine of the entire competition. So it's an enormously prestigious award. And I know that all of our category winners are sitting on pins and needles probably right now, wondering if it's them. This year, 
the New York Classics Governor's Award goes to Pomenac Winery. If I could have the Masood family come back on for their late harvest Sauvignon Blanc. Bravo, wow. Thank you. Also, Thank you. Governor's Thank you. Award. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. Uh, that's a wonderful gift. It's our 40th anniversary. And I, I thank my husband, my sons, here is Salim and Karim, our youngest son, sadly, is out in the vineyard yet. I guess he didn't make it in. And my our daughter-in-law, Karen. So and thank you all. Without all of you, we couldn't have done it. And Karen and all of you at the New York Wine and Grape Foundation, thank Welcome. you. You're doing a wonderful job out there. Thank you. Great ambassadors. Thank uh, you. Congratulations for taking home the Governor's Cup. It's really a very thank prestigious you. Thank award. You. It means a lot. It's a wonderful and, uh, gift. As mom just said, we're, it's been 40 years since my parents founded Pamanak by purchasing what used to be an old potato farm here. I had a different and color that. here. <laughs> And so we can't think of a better way to celebrate 40 years. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. but I want to also seize this moment to acknowledge everyone else who's on this call. I mean, there's so much great wine made across the state of New York, and uh, it, it it makes it all the more special uh, for us to 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 receive this award. So, thank you. Completely mm. agreed. Of course. All right. And please yep. come out and visit with us. <laughs> Here, uh, I, I'll take that as a as an yeah, open invitation. So all of you up there, uh, okay. I assume you are. I don't know. If you are transmitting from the up from the Hudson Valley, or this is yeah. Well, right now I'm coming to you from the Napa Valley, um, but I will tell you there is no great late harvest Sauvignon Blanc in the Napa Valley, so I'm very happy to be drinking your wine. Cheers. All right, good Thank you, food family. And uh, cheers, everyone. A great vintage, no matter where we are in the world. But oh, here is to good wine, good friends, and uh, above all, peace in the world. Excellent. Thank you. We'll all toast to that. And we have one final award. If I could have everyone off screen for a moment, there's one. La oh, excuse me, everyone on screen, what am I saying? Everyone on screen who has won uh, a best in category this year, here is everyone. So are, are we all here? Or I think we're all here, almost. We've got the Cuca team, we've got the Masoods, okay. We've got Althea and Eric um, and Bruce from Boundary Bakes. Our final award, is for Winery of the Year. Along with the Governor's Cup, this is an extremely prestigious award. It's granted to the winery with the highest overall average score based on all of the medals received uh, and the number of awards received relative to the number of entries submitted. Um, it's a very, it's very hard to attain uh, this award, Winery of the Year. And I'm ready to announce the winner. I'm so excited. Is everybody tingling? Okay. The winner this year, 2023, New York Wine Classic, the Winery of the Year is Pomenoc Winery, sweeping the deck. All right, the Masood family Ooh. has got to come back on one more time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Three huge awards in one, uh, excuse me, in uh. one classic competition. So best dessert wine, uh, ex yes, excuse me, best dessert wine, Governor's Cup and Winery of the Year. Congratulations. This is gonna drive me to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm not so curious. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, wow. Um, thank you. Wow. Uh, I, that was completely unexpected. I don't know what to say other than uh, that's amazing. And thank you so that's much. Uh, um, 
No. Um. Thank you. I, no, I lost my words. I'm just so happy. Just. Thank you to all my wonderful family. My husband. Uh, are to you, all of us. Yeah. Are you going to rain? <laughs> um, Some tears really, could be in order. <laughs> well, now we need the bubbly too. Uh, but, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> wow, this is uh, it's it really um, as you can tell we're, we're a, a bit a bit at a loss for words, but this is can only um, yeah, add to the celebration that we're having uh, over here celebrating forty years at Pamanok. It's fifty years of Long Island wine country. Uh, our region has now been around for fifty years growing fine wine, and for forty years at Pamanok. And uh, again, I can't think of a better way to. I mean, Governor's Cup was uh, an honor, but uh, uh, but to do have both, like I don't know what to say other than it's it's it really is an an incredible honor. And again, with all the, of our other fellow vintners on this call and around the state, there's so much great wine made in this state. It just means so much. Um, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Welcome. And to, to the and Wine we, Foundation, you know, for putting on the classic and everything. Uh, thank you. Well, we thank you, and we we second your um, your thoughts about all of the great wines being made throughout the state. And congratulations again to everyone who won an award tonight. I I am tasting the wines here right now, and I I know that every award is extremely well deserved. So thank you for allowing me to host this year's. New York Wine Classic. Keep making these great wines and cheers to New York State. Cheers. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.